Welcome to the Power Trip After Party Podcast. It is uh, not even 9 o'clock yet. In fact, some of the guys are still in the studio, but we are here, and I can't wait another second to get this thing started. Thanks to our friends at Haven Poker. Please download the app. Please use the uh, promo code Power Trip so we get credit for it, and you get extra cash to spend in the game. It's Haven Poker. It's fun. I'm playing it right now. Uh, uh, my uh, um, my name on there, it's just hockey, H-A-W-K-E-Y. Uh, Zacho, what's your name on there, buddy boy? Uh, Zach Halvey. Zach Halvey. Zach C-A-C-H-H-A-L-V-Y. Yeah, so get on there and play. Um, that was a weird noise that just came out of my mouth. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do this right now. We're going to do it right. We're going to talk to our main man, Max, and get the real story about what happened to him when he went uh, abroad uh, w- uh, looking for abroad. Um, <laughs> good to have you, as always, Max. Oh, there you are. Good to have you, you Max. Thank you. Uh, as Happy always. to be back. Um, uh, can you uh, just, uh, first of all, uh, if you wouldn't mind, um, Break it down for me. Uh, what was it like to uh, on your first stop? Where where, where did you stop? Uh, my first stop was in San Juan, Puerto Rico. Right, right, right. Uh, I fell in love approximately seven hundred fifty-eight times on my first day there. Did you? Uh, there were so many, just just loads of beautiful. All I was the whole two weeks, I was surrounded by beautiful women and oceans, and it was just. I mean, so beautiful they just stop your sentence. Yeah. I would be talking to my little brother, and then I would just. I don't even remember the hell I was saying. Mm. It was it, I, for randomly a bunch of beautiful pregnant women Ooh. out there. Not that pregnant women aren't beautiful all around yeah, the world, sure, but sure, like sure, just sure. like gorgeous, like to the point where I don't even. I will raise that baby. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't <laughs> care. I'm not uh, the stepdad. I'm the dad that stepped up. Yeah, right. But, I love that. That's but great. Um, yeah, just it was it was gorgeous. I rode uh, rode jet skis out there for the first Ooh, time. I know yeah. it's pretty regular for some people, but that. I didn't grow up. I never rode a boat before or anything like that. Right. So I just saw some jet skis chilling in the water. They were just blank. I was like, hey, I'm going to go fucking take them. Why not? They're just chilling in the water. My little brother's like, you can't do that. That's illegal. And so we looked into it, and, uh, they, yeah, it was like 40 bucks. Wow. Just ride around on the jet ski. And I was, uh, I was super pumped until, like, a little voice in my head right when I was about to get on the jet ski was like, remember Sarah J. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You got to be careful <laughs> those ways. Yeah, I got and... real, a real ang- intense anxiety. But, uh, it I helped guess I me. wouldn't know. Were there sharks in the water down there? Uh, no, I didn't see any. The water yeah. was as clear. You could, If there was, you could see them from a mile away. No it, was, it was the clearest uh, water I've ever seen in my so life. that's San Juan, Puerto Rico. Yeah. That's it, the first stop. That was the first stop. And did you, in fact, nail any tens? In Puerto Rico. I, I didn't because my little brother uh, will talk himself out of more pussy than he'll ever get in his life. So yeah, he's like a, right. a horrible wingman. No yeah. kidding. He horrible just talks himself right man. out of it. Talks himself right out oh, of it. Handsome wow. guy. He can sing. He can cook. Yeah. He just he's not good with the ladies. Oh, man. Just gets he's, he's just getting. He's had. He's been in a relationship. I hope he doesn't mind me telling. He's been in a relationship for like three four years. They do not have sex. But they just recently opened it up. Oh, okay. So now he's getting back into the flow. Getting back in the game. Things. Okay, yeah, good for know, him. Giving good. him pointers. It's a game everything. that uh, we need to play yeah. as human got beings. It. Yeah, he's got some tokens in his pocket. Uh, after you leave uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico with a uh, nutsack, <laughs> oh. uh, just bulging, <laughs> where just, was your next stop? I went to uh, Bogota, Colombia. And that was a plane ride, I'm guessing? Yeah, that was a plane was ride. Was it a regular size plane? Uh, yeah, pretty normal plane. I felt like a dick because I was so tired and I find, like I got a row to myself and I was just about to lay down and this dude's like, hey, can I hop in your row? And I just straight up told him no. <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to lay down. I was yeah. so tired. But Bogota was amazing. The elevation is no joke, though. People were not playing about that. I went up some stairs and I felt like like when a defensive lineman runs back a 99-yard interception. Yeah. <laughs> like, it was... It was intense there, but the, I mean, just beautiful women. Uh, it was just a party. I mean, I I stepped out of my door and I literally hear the beat to the final countdown, the first like thing I hear, and I'm like, okay, I know people say Bogota is dangerous, but I'm literally hearing the final countdown. <laughs> is this it for me? But there's just a, a fully like instrumented band, electric guitar, drums, just playing right there on the street. Keep walking down the street. I've seen about five or six other bands, and I'm like. Like tubas, trumpets, saxophones, like whole orchestrated actual bands. There's b boys everywhere, people spinning on their heads, break dancing. There's a live comedy show that was out there for free. And this is my first 30 minutes walking down the street. Wow. wow. I seen a llama and a fucking sombrero. I felt like I was in a fever <laughs> dream. <laughs> I, I couldn't believe people are selling you food left and right. People are trying to sell you other things left and right, squirt shit on your shoes so they could clean your shoes off and. All types of stuff, but it, it was a party there the whole time. How long is the flight? Um, it was. I flew from Puerto Rico and I had a layover in Fort Lauderdale, and then from Fort Lauderdale to Bogota, I think it was like three hours. So, so you came not that long 
from Puerto Rico, you came back to the United States. Well, you know what I mean. Yeah. Came back to the mainland and then flew to Bogota. Yeah. Wow. And there's like, much like pretty much everywhere else I went, not a whole lot of English speakers there. So I'm yeah. literally just making friends and talking to people purely off Google Translate, which I made a friend later on that said I shouldn't be taking out my phone in public like that because it's that serious. People will just snatch your phone right out of your hand. Um, yeah, that'd be. But yeah, but I was, that's, that's how I, could, I want to talk like the people talking and, you know, part yeah. of the reason I go places is to interact with people. So I was trying my best Spanish and everybody really, really appreciated it. Like hmm. the joy on their face. Cause some countries like France, they're like, just yeah. fucking don't, you yeah. know, yeah. but they really appreciated uh, me trying to speak Spanish. And there's just same like everywhere else, just beautiful women everywhere. I went on a date with a woman. Uh, we made out whatever. She's cool. She called me old though. Yeah. That wasn't cool. How, how yeah. old was she? She was 24. So I'm yeah. like, not uh, you're only that much. A few years older. You know. that's not but it was kind of weird because she was like, yes, I love John Denver and the Beach Boys. I'm like, John fucking Denver? Yeah, I'm like, and you're yeah. old? Yeah, right, that's what yeah. I'm saying. And I was like, what? Am I hmm. back in Minnesota? Wow. But it was crazy out there. Like I was telling you that there was people pretty much everywhere I went, they thought that I was them. Like in Puerto Rico, they thought I was Puerto Rican. In Colombia, they thought I was Colombian. But the interesting thing about actually getting to South America is there'd be a guy like looks like me, and then there'd be a guy that looks like Corey, but they're both just as Colombian. Like, yeah. nationality kind of comes first. Not to say racism isn't a problem out there, yeah. but everyone is whatever, you know, Colombian first, and then maybe your race later. But it was just super confusing. I'm like, what do you mean your name's Juan Markel, Mar- uh, Marquez? You know, you look as white as the guys on the big bang theory yeah, you know yeah, like brilliant like yeah. um so that was cool it was just a everywhere was just kind of a mix of like the freed african slaves that were there the indigenous people that were there which they are very visible out there which was really cool to see and then like the european colonizers and stuff mm. so did you um close the deal in bogota um we just made out really okay, because no, she lived it, in huh? yeah she yeah. lived in a dorm and she had like a curfew or whatever but yeah i climbed a mountain and you're sure she was 20 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes, maybe, sure. maybe she uh, thought no. you were old yeah because. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um no, so, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll did you see it. the uh, um uh remnants of the cartel at all in no it wasn't nothing. nothing the only thing i even remotely saw about cartels that they were selling like escobar merch and stuff like that which hmm. makes sense i mean for like you can yeah, sure. try to profit off of it, you yeah, know, but correct. it was something that people don't really talk about there. And to the extent that I heard it, they were just saying they're like, cocaine, that's not really a thing that people do like that anymore out there. It's just such a foregone thing in the past that people really don't like bringing it. I mean, it'd be like if we constantly talked about 9-11 or something like that, right. you know, like it's like one of the worst things that's ever happened there. So right. people don't really like talking about it very much. Mm. Is um, there any part of it that you felt unsafe or would have skipped if you knew um, if you went back when i, I was in like the you you could tell when you're in like the the poorer parts of town in brazil are called the favelas basically the ghetto and uh i mean literally the ghetto was place i've ever seen in america looks like the fucking hamptons compared to the favelas i mean like actually i'm like scared as soon as i walk into that part of town broken glass everywhere people living i saw a guy who had like a there's the subway logo as a doormat and that was his roof that was his roof. And these are like houses, quote unquote. And it's just some of the worst poverty you've ever seen in your life. And mm. like even when I was in Brazil, it was just kind of striking because like I said on the radio, you're one street away from heaven, two streets away from hell. You'll, you'll see Copacabana, you see Ipanema Beach, all these songs that are, or, you know, beaches that are legendary. They're in songs, they're in music, they're immortalized. And then you go to the favela and it's some of the worst poverty you've ever seen in your life to the point that even locals... It's not just foreigners. Like, I had a local tell me in Brazil, you have as much of a 50% chance of getting robbed every time you step outside. Like, almost everybody there has been robbed at some point or another. Wow. Like, it was... So, eventually, I just started... Once I learned the streets, I would just leave my stuff at home. I would go out at night sometimes still because I'm like, hey, life is show prep. If I got stabbed or robbed, that's kind of a good story. Yeah, sure. As long yeah, as I live. appreciate yeah, that. You know? yeah. 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 Sure. Right. Yeah. We were a little disappointed you didn't. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just yeah. for yeah. content. I thought about, you know, just giving myself a poke. Just, well, yeah, yeah, a little, little more. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah. But, um, so you left Bogota and went where? Uh, I went to Rio. That's when you went to that. Rio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what was that, the best part of the trip? Yeah, I would say so. There was just so much to do there. Uh, the beaches are just incredible the people are there just live with such passion like i said i got to go to soccer game and soccer means everything to people in brazil a 20 minute ride to the stadium turned into an hour and 20 minute ride because it was that packed and those aren't even the two most popular teams in brazil and uh you know took a cable car up to sugarloaf mountain like a 
So there's such a, I was saying it off the air, there's such a beautiful view that a guy, t- I said three sentences to, gave me a hug and told me, be safe, man. <laughs> like, the, it was this, when the wow. sun finally, like, peaked below the clouds, everyone, like, ab- erupted into a fucking applause. Wow. And, like, people were crying, hugging each other, mm. and it was awesome. It kind of sucked because every time I was at a beautiful view type area, it reminded me of that, that picture of uh, the NBA game where everybody's on their phones. Yeah. Like, almost nobody's actually watching it with sure. their eyes. Right. Um, and people are telling you, oh, get, get out of the way. I'm like, shut the fuck up. Like, this is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen, you know. Um, yeah. But, yeah, Brazil was just, it was just incredible. And, probably yeah, like I said, if ass was cash, Brazil would be the richest country <laughs> in the world by a landslide. I mean, if I was an alien and I came to Brazil, I would think that Megan the Stallion and the Michelin Man were Adam and Eve. Like, <laughs> it, it was... <laughs> the most beautiful Sorry, place <laughs> on planet Earth. And actually, I mean, I, the sun is just so different. I actually got sunburned for the first time. I Did you really? I think well, that was possible, yeah. Yeah. Welcome well, aboard. Right, yeah, I know. I was like, right. I could finally say I understand. My little brother's like, yeah, we need sunscreen. I'm like, what are you talking about, man? We black. Like, the sun loves us. And the sun's like, no, I don't, you black motherfuckers. So, <laughs> yeah, I got burned like a mug. Yeah, like, but, um, yeah, Brazil was incredible. There was so much stuff to do out there um people where did just, you a uh, paraglide or whatever you called it uh in lima yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, so that was the next place you went yeah brazil yeah. don't the, the only bad part about brazil was staying in that dude's house i had to leave i've stayed in some places but is that the spider house yeah there i killed 12 spiders in one night Ugh. i had basically like a tarzan loincloth as a blanket Ugh. and it, even that had a hole in it my pillows had holes in them and smelled like bo which, oh. how does your face smell like bo oh. i have no idea um half of my window was just tape not even glass. Jesus, just, man. Just duct tape. The sink was duct taped together, and whenever you flushed, a, something sprayed back at you. I don't know Jesus. if it's doo-doo juice or whatever, but, like, um, something dripped on me in the middle of the night, and finally I was just like, okay, I can't. I can't fucking do it. You this. just left? Yeah, I left. I didn't Did even... you give him a good review? No, I got my money back, and I, t- and I messaged him on WhatsApp and said, you probably shouldn't even be allowed to have people at your house. Wow. Like, not to go full Karen on it, but I was. that was just... That's terrible. That yeah, was that's yeah. Horrible. That was that was one of those ones where I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta call my mom yeah. and ask her to help me find a new place. Yeah. Like, because that was, uh, yeah, I just left. I didn't even say a word to him. He was, and he just kind of was a weird guy. He just he talked to me for an hour about phones that he fixed. I'm like, dude, let me go. He's like, yes, and then I, I fixed the phone for the security guard, and then he recommended me to his friend, and and then I fixed that phone, and he was acting like it was the most incredible thing of the. I'm like. He's like, let me show you a picture. I'm like, I know what an unbroken yeah. phone looks like, <laughs> but thank you, man. Um, so that was, yeah. But after that, my trip to Brazil was just incredible. People, super kind there. Um, I went through, I hiked through the rainforest to see the giant Jesus statue, one of the seven wonders of the world. And even that, like, the rainforest is so big, it's connected to some of the favelas. So people from the ghettos sneak into the rainforest and people get robbed there all the time they said within 60 days one time there was 108 about 180 robberies wow tourists locals whoever so like i had to sign a waiver that basically said i know i'm in danger by being here Jeez. and they get i had to give an emergency contact and everything it's not, it doesn't even cost any money you know it's just that you have to let them know like the police are just they're only at the beginning and then after that you're on your own. So I can't, I was walking through like my pick was a lightsaber. Right. <laughs> Just like Jeez. ready to, ready to defend myself. But I ended up meeting up with some uh, really nice Brazilians that weren't from, they were from a different part of Brazil. They were in town and uh, they were playing like Bob Marley and Michael Jackson and stuff. So we started talking about music and kind of just joined their group and became friends with them. So I felt a lot safer. Hmm. Um, and they clearly weren't worried about it. They're playing music out loud off their phones and stuff right. like that. But I was pretty concerned about it. That's why I chose to wait until it was a Saturday so it was more packed and stuff like that because I, I, I mean, if someone steals my phone and my wallet, then I'm done. You're you know? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. yeah. So that there's kind of always, you're on the precipice of the time of your life and the end of your life at all <laughs> times in Brazil. So, like, um, that was that was really interesting. But people are, you know, generally really kind there and, and really nice and like i said just i mean just the most gorgeous woman <laughs> when you went to the beach did you see the really expensive resorts and stuff like that yeah you could see the resorts you could see like fancy boats and stuff like that and yeah. that was just that's also startling to see such opulence when you see like yeah the worst poverty you've ever seen in your sure. life like well, it wasn't there a picture from was it the world cup where it was like opulence and just five-star hotels and then just 
Yeah, no, even yeah. I went, the, the stadium that I went to the soccer game at was at the Olympic Stadium, which is state-of-the-art, amazing, but the, the neighborhood around it and the neighborhood on the way to get there, you'd never, you'd wow. never believe it. You wouldn't, you wouldn't walk around there at nighttime. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the thing is, like, it's not, it's even locals. Like, I was trying to just look as, like, crusty and bummy as possible. Like, just wore no logos or anything like that. It's not, apparently it worked because some people were crossing the street from me. I'm like, wait, hold on. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm not the robber. <laughs> <laughs> and your last stop then was Peru? Was Peru, yeah. Um, that's when, and people were actually just shocked in general because I think most people just stop in Lima on the way to Machu Picchu. So people were like, oh, you're just here for Lima? You know, that was pretty shocking to them. And they were super kind. Um, everybody there was really nice. And I got to go paragliding, so... I had a lot of fucking anxiety about that, but the coolest guy on planet Earth was my instructor guy. He just he got Which up. Which one is paragliding? I don't remember. Um, is it's that... I was basically in like a go kart type thing. Okay, yeah, and right. there's like a little yeah. motor on the back, and then they have the parachute going. Cool. Um, and that's it. Like, but it was nice because I was super anxious on the way there, but I was there for maybe three minutes before I was in the sky. They don't even give you a chance to be scared. They're just like, "Oh, you're Max Fuller. Okay, cool. Boop. Here's your helmet." Strap you in. Let's go. Like, do you, do you take off like a strip, or do you ride off a cliff? It's just uh, on a flat surface, yeah. really. Yeah, and just and you just start going, and um, yeah, they give you a, a, a selfie stick with a GoPro at the end. So I have my whole ride like filmed and everything like that. It was like, what do they minutes. charge? It was seventy five dollars. So wow, hmm. not bad for no. not at freaking all. paragliding, you no. know. Um, and yeah, this this guy just is wearing the full outfit. He had a toothpick in his mouth. Got up, didn't say a fucking word to me, just got in, just started it up. And I was like, oh, this is the coolest motherfucker on planet Earth. Like, I'm not even concerned anymore. As yeah. soon as I got strapped in, I, I didn't, I wasn't worried. I'm like, mm. these people do this dozens and dozens of times a day. Like, yeah. he landed and just, he didn't, wasn't even on the ground for two minutes and he took my friend up. So, like, wow. that's just how they do it out there. Yeah. Um, but it was, oh. I like I said off the air, I just, I couldn't, I was like, man, I could have been born in the time, like, fighting saber toothed tigers living in a fucking cave, but I, Happened to be born at a time where humans can do cool shit like this, like fly. It was very relaxing up there. You could see the whole city, the whole ocean. They turn you towards the ocean at some point, so you could do just a full view of the ocean. You could see things that you could never see on the ground, and it was incredible. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Man, that's incredible. And then you flew home from there. Yeah, and that's uh, that's the only time I like encountered any kind of fuckery. It was just the <laughs> Lima, <laughs> the Lima airport was so stupid. Um, like, I took my liquids out of my bag, and the lady yelled at me to not, but then they check people's bags for liquids when you're boarding. Hmm. And so I only, and I only had 55 minutes in between that and my con- connecting flight, so I was super just anxious. They yeah. ended up holding the flight for just one guy. Um, people were acting a fool on the flight. I was in the middle seat, and this guy was pushing my arm. And I'm like, dude, come on. I'm, I'm in the middle seat, man. He's like, I have an equal right to this armrest as much as you do. I'm like, all right, fucking Martin Luther King, calm down. Like, <laughs> this is like, shut the fuck up, man. Like, um, and yeah, they were just doing shit ass backwards. It's spirit. So there's lots of fuckery involved with flying with spirit. <laughs> they tried to tell me that my fuckery. They're like, I was like, because I'm rushing through the airport because I have my, my flight. My flight is boarding while we're landing. And so I'm sprinting through the airport. I try to call Spirit because I'm like, hey, they held the flight for that guy. Maybe they'll yeah. hold it for me. And they're like, nope, your flight left on time. I was like, no, it didn't. Like, you have flight logs. Why would I lie about that? Right. You know, they're like, nope, it left on time. If you miss it, it's your fault. Huh. And so, yeah, I just at that point, I just started just I couldn't lie. I'm, I'm, I'm budging people. I'm cutting in line and everything. This this lady, I was I was just so anxious. This lady behind me was like, we're all in the same situation. What's the difference between me and you? I said, manners, I guess. I don't give a fuck. I'm not fucking getting stuck here. I don't think anybody's ever tried to get to Detroit as hard as I was. I was <laughs> sprinting through the airport out of breath, but eventually I made it. But, yeah, that was the only time I encountered any type of fuckery at all. There was no attempted robberies or anything. There's always the threat of it because even yeah. locals are telling you, yeah, it's it's dangerous. It's not a lie. Like. But nothing like that ever happened to me when I was out there. Last thing, uh, and then I got a story about a penis for you. Um, <laughs> Can't wait. Um, if you were to live in one place on the trip, where would you live? I would probably, <coughs> I would have to say Bogota or Rio because, um, I mean, San Juan would just be paradise living. But, like, Bogota, it was just, like I said, it was just such a party all the time kind yeah. of atmosphere. And there's such a community aspect to everything you actually see people gathered outside which is just like 
you don't see that here. I mean, even if you're at the park, your neighborhood park too long, people will call the police on you in, in America, you know. But you see people, like, actually, like, gathered around watching two guys play chess, like, mm. on, on a chess table. It's just such a community aspect there. And like I said, while I was there, everybody thought I was them, so I didn't, like, stick. I wasn't like Europe where I'm a fucking sideshow. Might as well be a clown in Denmark. But, um... If there was just such a community aspect that I really appreciated and really liked. So I'd probably say Bogota or Rio, just because Rio, there's so much to do. But yeah, I, I felt a lot, I felt a lot safer in Bogota than in Rio, actually. Hmm. There you go, he's back, guys. What do you? Uh, before we get to your penis story, sure. So the show ended this morning, and obviously Marnie and Max won in the box, right? Right. So <clears throat> me and uh, and Rosie are trying to Venmo everybody, and Rosie. Venmo's Marnie, then he Venmo's Max, and he, and he goes, uh, so just uh, at Maxwell Fuller, right? And I go, well, wait, well, it's actually like at Maxwell-Fuller-Six, and he goes, oh, God damn it! <laughs> he apparently, <laughs> Rosie, Rosie, Come on. Rosie, Rosie Venmo'd the wrong, just a random Max Fuller 25 bucks. He goes, how do I do this now? I'm like, well, you gotta, you gotta, you're gonna have to contact him and ask for money back, but I'm like, that person doesn't have to give you any, so it made me, uh, it reminded me, though, when Robbie freaking Rosenhaus won the golf bet a couple weeks sure. ago, I don't know if it was a complete coincidence or not, but uh, I saw a whole bunch of, like, at Robbie Rosenhaus, at Robbie dash Rosenhaus. Not a super common name, and I'm like, I wonder how many of these are just rubes just hoping Trying one of cash. us accidentally <laughs> sends them $200. Yeah. Wow. If you get one person, like Rosie, to accidentally send you 200 bucks, is that worth spending time to... Yeah. Do a fake account with a bank well, account? Yeah. I don't know if it's yeah. worth it. Was it Marty that paid the wrong Mark Parrish yeah, once? Yeah, but then got, got yeah. refunded. He was like yeah. a college kid. But yeah. Rosie yeah. was like, well, I guess that guy just made 25 bucks. And I'm like, well, you got to at least, you know, try to get your money back Rosie's from him. But so sick of us. I yeah. know. He <laughs> really is. He is. And he was not happy because he apparently lost uh, twice to Max, I right. guess, this morning. <laughs> so did he actually pay you or not? Yeah, you know, he did. Okay, he so did, he, he paid did. somebody else <laughs> and you. But I don't understand asking for the correct address after, after you've already you hit yeah, send. Right, he just goes, right. so it's at Maxwell Fuller, right? I go, well, no. Well, hang on. Slow down. <laughs> <Yes>. God damn it. <laughs> Classic Rosie. He's not great with names. Oh. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Uh, real quick, Nailed can I it. say one last thing about Brazil that I sure. forgot to bring up that uh, I wish I knew beforehand? Apparently, Brazilians use KKK instead of LOL. Oh, my. So, uh... Yeah, I thought I was talking to this girl on Tinder and I uh, thought we were having a good time, laughing, <laughs> oh my God. enjoying Oof. ourselves. And then she just responds, KKK. Uh, the boy. laughing stopped. I <laughs> thought I was about to be a political prisoner. I'm like, oh my God, I'm the next Brittany Griner. The, the clan done oh. followed me below the equator. Oh boy. And I'm not nearly as good at basketball as her, so I'm stuck over here. <laughs> Somebody call the embassy. Somebody call fucking Joe Biden. I'm 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 done. Like it's over for me. And then I go I googled it really quick and I found that out. I was like, well, that's something you guys should put in the fucking pamphlet, yeah. maybe. Jesus. Wow. So uh, yeah, that was a that was a cultural uh, difference that I was not prepared for. All right, the last story of the day on the After Party podcast is a warning for you in particular, Max. Oh. A man in Tanzania was sent to the hospital after hearing a snap during sex with his partner. Oh, oh God. no. <laughs> no. I've got the power. Oh. <laughs> Zach doesn't even Zach, the did you, have you heard a snap? It might have been the, the Fonz. Hey. hey. A loud Thanos. snap occurred when the penis slipped out and lost its way. <laughs> <laughs> Poor PP. The puppy who lost its way. It struck the woman as he was trying to reinsert it. Oh, oh no. By the time the unlucky man arrived at the hospital, his penis. No longer erect, was swollen, painful, and bloody. Oh, no. Looked like a boomerang. Oh. Though the penis contains no bones, uh, it's referred to as a fracture when its fibrous connective tissue, called the tunica albuginea, is ruptured. Mm. An MRI revealed that the man had injured his penis in three separate places. And the pair of erectile tissue bodies known as corporea carvinarsa. And in another area as well called the corpus sponginosum. Additionally, he had sustained Harry a, Potter spells. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Additionally, he had sustained a partial tear in his urethra. Oh, god damn it. 
penis fracture is usually considered a com- an uncommon condition, but nobody knows how often it really occurs because many men are too embarrassed to seek medical treatment for it. However, uh, cases of penis fracture are rising, according to statistics, uh, revealed a 38% increase in the condition from 2014 to 2020. Um the growth in penile breakage may be due to an increase in the use of erectile dysfunction drugs such as Viagra or the viewing of penile, I should say. <laughs> viewing. The viewing of online pornography Ooh. that encourages unusual sexual positions. Penis breakage usually occurs during sexual intercourse. Thank you. Uh, it has also occurred <laughs> during energe- energetic masturbation. My God. <laughs> Also, it's happened when someone rolled over in bed. Jesus Christ, man. Oh, my God. God. Relax, Linda Blair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or bang. <laughs> or by banging an erect penis into a door or wall. Jesus. Oh. <laughs> Poor Jim Morrison. <laughs> uh, oh. The Brazilian study also revealed that the riskiest sex position for penis fracture is. Doggy. I got to think. Is it, uh, is it missionary? It's got to be girl on top. The girl on top. That's exactly oh, right. Yeah. The most dangerous position, uh, followed by doggy style. Uh, the uh, the penis can also be fractured by practicing taekwondo. It makes, by the way, it makes. Hi-ya! The reason why I guess it. <laughs> the reason why I guess that is it makes sense because if she's on top, you have minimal control over where it's going. Right? She is, oh. essentially she's controlling it. Right. So it might be like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> And then it's like, son of a bitch, I told you to follow my lead, you son of a bitch. Now I got to, now I'm embarrassed. I'm probably not going to report this. I got Tunica Canginosa, (laughs) or whatever the fuck it was called. Son of a bitch. You just wait. I'm not done yet. The reason I brought this story up, and I did it on the after party. The penis can also be fractured by practicing Taquantin, a Kurdish (laughs) word meaning to click. Taquandin involves bending the top of an erect penis while holding the lower shaft in place until a click is heard. Oh. It's like a That's snap bracelet. Like. A fractured penis is usually accompanied by a snapping or cracking finished. sound, bleeding, <laughs> or an immediate loss of erection, and a sharp pain. Uh, the injured penis, looking swollen and purple with a severe bruise, may re- be referred to as having eggplant deformity. Oh. There you go. Well, I'm straight now, so... Uh... Your penis isn't. Yep. Oh. <laughs> Quit clicking. Uh, doctors... Yeah. <laughs> uh, doctors warn that a penis fracture isn't something to ignore, Zach, uh, as it can lead to erectile dysfunction. Difficulty urinating. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey. I'm the dude standing beside you at the urinal. Get it out of here. Um, pain in the penis with erections and penile plaque which is something you never want to earn. Ew, brilliant. Uh, like most men who seek treatment for penis fracture, the patient from Tanzania promptly had penis surgery. Within three days, he was discharged from the hospital, and a catheter in his urethra was finally removed oh. 21 days later. God. There you go. Uh, that happened to a buddy of mine. Oh. Really? Broken? Mm-hmm. He was in Mexico with his, I think, his girlfriend at the time, and it came out, went back in, and it hit. Her um, pel or her, her butt bone, yeah, and just smack. And he sat in like a, I think it was a hospital in Mexico somewhere oh, for golly. three hours, and his sack was like, oh, isn't that weird? How his sack is swole? Yeah, God, he said it was yeah. horrible, horrible. I'm I mean, glad. even when you don't break it and that happens, it's one of the worst feelings ever. Yeah, like yeah, unless you're into it. That's true. Cook to Anden. Hiya. <laughs> And that's the After Party Podcast, brought to you by Haven Poker. They Thanks, are Haven. so proud. Yes, Haven Poker, thank you, you can Haven download Poker. it from the App Store. It's absolutely free to download. Then just type in the promo code POWERTRIP within the first 48 hours to double your initial bankroll. If you want to play poker against your friends, uh, practice so you can go play the World Series of Poker for real or whatever, just uh, play on Haven Poker. Do it. Haven Poker. H-A-Y-V-I-N Poker. Thank you, Haven. App Store. Bye, bye everybody. Download it. Go. Bye, 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 bye.